Hello everyone, I'm Hassan Ebrahimi, a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Luxembourg. I'm working at the Department of Computer Science. I'm telling you about uh, our paper uh, that, is, that is accepted to PKC 2022. Uh, for the rest of the presentation, I will turn off my video since I might cover it might cover some part of the study. So all right. Um, so OAP is a transformation that uses two random locals uh, and a partial domain one way permutation to obtain an and distinguish your CCA secure encryption scheme. How does it work? In order to encrypt a message M, we append a zero bit string of length K1 to M and choose a randomness R, then we query G on R to get G of R and XOR it with the message. This part is called S. Then we query H on N for the S and XOR it with R. This part is called T. And then apply F on inputs the S and T to get the ciphertext. How the, how the decryption works? We use inverse of F to get S and T, and then H of S XOR with T gives us the randomness R, and XORing S with T of R gives us the message back. What is in the single CCA security means uh, in random local model? Possibly you are familiar with this security notion, so I briefly I briefly explain it. Uh, here, both adversary and challenger have access to random locals. Adversary, given PK, has access to decryption queries uh, also, and later. Uh, the adversary outputs two messages uh, M0 and M1. The challenger encrypts one of them randomly to get CSR and send CSR to the adversary. And adversary's goal is to guess which message has been encrypted. Obviously, adversary is not allowed to ask for encryption of CSR because trivially adversary can guess, can obtain the with the property one. If it's allowed to to make a decryption query on input to a CS star. How security proofs uh, are done usually in the random worker model. So the assumption is that there is a public of truly random function that all parties, including adversary, can, can query it. And in the security proof, usually a list of inputs and output queries to random local is needed. And also we need to adaptively change the, the random local in the security proof. Or program or a program random local in the security proof. I give you uh, I give you a reason why we need to consider a quantum random local model. So since in the real world applications, the random local will be replaced with a cryptographic hash function, and the code of this hash function is public, the quantum adversary can implement this hash function in its quantum device. So we need to consider the proposition access uh, or supposition queries to the random local. Uh, the second argument uh, may not work trivially because uh, recording quantum queries uh, are not possible in general due to no cloning theorem. So this this uh, part is, is difficult to hold in a quantum case. The third property, or yeah, that uh, adopting uh, adapt Adaptively programmed random local might not be obvious as well, since uh, 
A single superposition query can contain all the inputs outputs of the random oracle. And uh, a programming random oracle afterwards might not be possible. So we will say make such a query and then we try to change the output of uh, random oracle in one specific input or a programmed random oracle, then uh, this might be detectable that say since it has been created before. The existing research uh, prior to our work shows that a modified OAP that is called QOAP is in distinguished CCA in a quantum random model. QAP uses an extra random oracle uh, in this way. So it's almost the same as OAP, ex excepting the ciphertext C2 that is obtained by querying a new random oracle H prime. So querying H prime input uh, SMT gives us the second ciphertext that is C2. This extra, uh, this extra random oracle need, is needed to overcome the recording barrier uh, in the paper and it has been used for extraction of s &T in the security proof. For the third challenge, one way to hiding lemma has been, has been used. That is, it's a tool to to overcome the third challenge. So uh, we improve the existing result in two fronts. First, we show in distinguished QCCA security that is stronger than in distinguished CCA. Second, we show uh, the post quantum security of unmodified OAP. And the, technique that, the techniques that have been used uh, in our paper, our Chambry's recording technique and its follow up works and gentle measurement levels. So, what is in the single QCC security in a quantum model? model? It's uh, shown, it is shown in this slide. Uh, the quantum adversary here has superposition access to the random models, also the decryption of. And adversary's goal is to guess uh, the bit of bit. I will explain this quantum access in, in the next slide. So canonical way of querying a classical function or H, a classical function H or implementing H in a quantum computer is to prepare two registers, one input register and one output register, and then the basis is say the cat x and y goes to cat x and y x or f x. So evaluation of f on input x is stored in the y register. For decryption queries is similar with the difference that if the challenge query c star is defined and submitted as a query to decryption query as a decryption query, then the decryption oracle returns but so it doesn't doesn't decrypt the CSR. And CSR is classical cybernetic, so this unitary is defined, uh, is well defined. I give you a very short introduction to the compressor standard oracle. Of course, I'm not the right person to, to present this and more, for, more information is available in the original paper. The CSDO is, uh, if I want to summarize its properties, is efficient. It stores the input and output of queries in a shared database. Shared, I mean, it's shared with the adversary and Rocco. And it's perfectly indistinguishable from the standard Rocco. I explained the high level idea of. The CSDO, this representation lacks details and it's not, and in this representation, the implementation is not efficient. It's just to build the intuition 
behind the CSTO. So the standard way of uh, considering the uh, quantum random Oracle model is to uh, the Oracle choose a, a random function from the set of all functions and the, the answer occurs with the unitary u sub h. That is in the like standard way of implementing h on a quantum computer. Another perspective is that the Oracle puts uniform superposition of all functions in his private register and answer the query uh, as shown in the slide. So uh, these two perspectives are, are the same since if, for instance, I measure the Oracle, basically if Oracle measures the, its private register in the perspective two, then it gets the same ensemble of quantum state as the perspective one, or you, you can say that one, one is the purification of the other one. Now, if, if we apply QFT, quantum Fourier transform on wire, just uh, before and after query, like uh, uh, querying the random oracle, We'll get the phase or with the change of notation uh, from a, a random function h to its true stable and considering the point function a piece of x and y uh, where the point function is a function that like piece of x and y is a function that it's uh, y on input x and it's zero elsewhere uh, we will get the, the state showing in the start, slide. Differences has been shown by the blue color. Now, if the Oracle applies QFT on his priority, you said the point function is stored in the Oracle state. In other words, the pair X the pair, pair X and Y is stored in the Oracle register. And um, yeah, of course, this is a, this is a high level, like high level idea of the CSTO and, and its original, the origin, original representation and definition is quite different from here. Uh, but at the end, uh, we will get something like this, that there is a database uh, that is shared between adversary and the Oracle. And the queries are stored in this database. Basically, the uh, database is entangled with, with both parties. I give you the overview of the proof. So we start with the uh, indistinguishable QCCA game in a quantum random Oracle model. Then we introduce a sequence of uh, indistinguishable games to reach the last game for which the success probability of the adversary is half. And that finishes the proof because the games, basically the games that were introduced are indistinguishable and the last game probability of the success probability is half. So We'll get the overall probability of uh, like, uh, winning that winning the game and this single QCC game is one half plus negative. So game zero is in this single QCC game and I point around the Markov model. The first time is so for assigning the random elements and the rest is the attack in which A wants to guess the B to B that is chosen randomly by each other. In game one, the random local H is replaced with uh, compressor standard local H and random local G is replaced with the random injective function. Since these Replacements are indistinguishable for a quantum, for a polytime quantum adversary. Then 
the two, the two games zero and one are in the same issue. In game two, we replace the normal decryption oracle with a new decryption oracle that is called UDEC1. U sub deck one um, for any decryption queries first applies the purified measurement to MDH and then it applies a normal decryption of the U deck F inverse and applies the MDH, uh, the purified measurement to MDH again. The purified measurement to MDH search. For uh, for for a uh, database of H for the pairs of the pairs of S and H H of S such that the, the diagram in this slide holds. So in other words, the in other words, uh, the MDH uses the inverse of F to get only T, and then. When getting T, it search over the database of the edge to, to find the pairs of pairs of S and H of S such that um, G of T XOR H of S XOR with S gives us uh, the, the zero, the bit of zero here. So basically, uh, for the pairs that the decryption Succeeds. If uh, there is such a, there are such a s, then the smallest s will be the output of MDH, and if there is no such s, then the output of MDH will be empty. Two games are indistinguishable because uh, m sub dh. Uh, and the description of the deck uh, F inverse almost commute due, due, due to a, a recent result and, and because MDH is an involution. So if we commute one, of, one MDH with U deck F inverse, then they will cancel out and I, we will get the U deck F inverse. So these two games are in the solution. In game three, we replace the random oracle G with the compressed standard oracle G, so CSDOG. And obviously, game two and three are indistinguishable because of the Janish So that says the CSDO G and the standard oracle G are indistinguishable. In game four, we, we use a new decryption. Um, it's called UDEC2. And then first, uh, this new decryption uh, first basically applies two purified measurements. The MTH is the same with the previous side, and the new purified measurement, MDG, that uh, search in a database of DG. So the purified measurement in DG is search in a database of DG for pairs R and U of R, such that the diagram in the, in the side holds. In other words, it uses F inverse to get S, and then it search uh, over a database of DG to find G of R such that XOR, uh, XOR with, with S gives uh, K1 bits of zero. So it search, it, it basically, it uh, uses inverse of F to get S and then search over the database of DG for a pairs that the decryption succeeds. The output of the MDG will be the smallest R and if there's not, there isn't such an R, then the output will be empty. So. Two games of two games of three and four are indistinguishable because of recent results. Uh, 
that MDG and new tech have inverse almost commute. And since MDG has an evolution, then uh, if we commute, they will cancel out, and then I will, we will get uh, the UDEC one. We change the decryption rule uh, further in game five to get a new decryption rule named UDEC three. This new decryption returns bottom if at least one of the measurement MDH or MDH is not successful. Otherwise, it is good the normal decryption. So if, if both measurements are successful, then it executes the UDEC F inverse. The high level intuition why they inform why we're indistinguishable is because the adversary is not able to output a valid cyberdex with high probability unless it executes the random output queries. In game six, we we use a new decryption oracle, uh, new decryption oracle, in which uh, it only uses database of the, the H and the G for decryption. It doesn't use F inverse anymore. So how does it work? It, it sets for uh, the H and the G to find pairs S, H of S and R G of R such that uh, C is equal to F of S and R X or H of S and G of R X or S gives us K1 uh, bits of zero. Uh, and if, bo this bo uh, if both condition hold, then the end most significant bits of G of R X or S will be the output of the decryption. So this decryption doesn't use the inverse of F at all, and it, it checks if this if there are pairs of in a database that these two condition hold. It's not difficult to see these two decryption return the same out because the pure purified measurements and the H and he also looks for such a pairs in a database. And once there are such a such a pairs, then basically the output of UDEC F inverse and, and the output of the this new decryption are exactly the, the end most significant bits of geo geo four exercise. And finally, in the last game, we measure the, the queries to the random model G with the projected measurement M or star. So the output of the measurement is one if, if the post measurement is or a star and otherwise it's zero. If the output is one, the output of one of the measurement is one, then uh, we abort and return a random bit, otherwise we can see. So this is, a, this is a way to prevent the adversary to, to query the RSR to the random or bridge. For the, to, to show that game six and seven are indistinguishable for the queries before the challenge query, we use a gentle measurement lemma. And for post challenge queries, we reduce, uh, we reduce it we reduce it to the partial domain one radius of the permutation F. So, uh, uh, like with an, with an adversary that distinguishes these two games, we construct an adversary that breaks the security of the permutation F. Not uh, here, uh, the decryption queries uh, are answered with the uh, only database of dh and dg so it doesn't use the inverse of f so the reduction can be done because of this because uh, 
and we, we, we don't we don't need the, uh, the basically the secret key to to answer the decryption queries. And finally, the uh, final step, uh, since the success probability of the adversary in games seven is one over two and the games are indistinguishable, the proof is complete. And why the success probability in game seven is, is one over two? Because RSR and subsequently GOP RSR is uh, basically they are a random value from the adversary's perspective. So uh, the beta B is hidden information theoretically from, from the adversary. So GSR, G of GR star uh, hides uh, MB zero K from the adversary. And uh, besides the theoretical importance of our result, uh, this, this answers to an open question posted in the intro submission, one of the, the finalists of the NIST competition. Thank you a lot for the listening and good luck.